Well, thanks, John. And now it's time to take a look at some of the stories in the news and out there in pop culture that have people talking. Psychotherapist D Dr. Robbie Ludwig joins us on the couch to discuss what is going on with Gwyneth Paltrow. Wow. I mean, she is really out of touch. When you read some of the statements that Gwyneth says, like women who work nine to five have it easier. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a woman who grew up very wealthy and obviously she's turned into a big movie star and has a very privileged life. Uh, and, and women who are working nine to five are, are responding very negatively to Gwyneth's comments, understandably so, because being a working mom, as you know, as I know, is very challenging. Most people don't have a staff. Um, and, and it looks like Gwyneth is just feeling sorry for herself. It does show, though, that the grass is greener on the other side, regardless of where you're looking from. Uh, well, you know, we actually have the letter. We have some of the quotes, quotes from yes. the letter. So uh, a woman responded to Gwyneth's comments and said, Thank God I don't make millions filming one movie per year is what I say to myself pretty much every morning. As I wait on a windy Metro North platform, about to begin my 45-minute commute into <laughs> the city. And then there's another uh, comment that she has up here. Now, what I wanted to say is that I actually agree with you. Dr. Robbie, I um, I believe that Gwyneth is so out of touch with reality mm -hmm. that you know it almost makes me feel sorry for her. Really? Because, no, because for somebody to be that out of touch with what people mm -hmm. are going through. You not, feel sorry for Gwyneth Paltrow? I feel sorry That's for kind. Gwyneth Paltrow that she doesn't have enough people wow. in her life to keep it real with her. Let her know, wow, you really don't understand what a lot of people are going through. You know, I don't know. I, no, at I, it in a I love your perspective. I just think when you are out there and you are lucky enough to be a prominent public figure, figure out who your audience is and realize yeah. that your life is not everyone's life. Well, and, and sometimes that's people off. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Would, You're going to hurt your see, audience. I wouldn't want to see yep. a movie and, that she's And the she's feeling in. is, is that I think the, the sense is that she doesn't care if she's turning people off. Mm -hmm. Like, even her website is geared to the very elite. It's elite. She sells yeah. shorts, you know, for $400. Right. Who's going to buy shorts for $400? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think there's an elitist, pompous attitude that comes across. And, and if she's not aware of it, she should be. Yeah. I can get four suits for $400. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of money, I've, I found this just curious, sad but curious. Loren Scott leaves her $9 million estate to her boyfriend, Mick Jagger. Now, I thought her company was in dire financial straits, and I didn't know that Mick Jagger really needed the money not to be crass. No, but if, if you uh, know anything about Loren Scott, her business was really funded by Mick Jagger for a very long time. Oh, okay. So it's very possible that Loren felt she really owed Mick this money, or it could have been a, a statement of anger. Here, take all of your money back. I Ooh. don't want anything wow. from you. Now, now we're even. Ugh. We don't really know the backstory between these two, so we're oh. just trying to analyze some of the facts that we do know but sometimes giving somebody money back is a statement I don't want anything from you I don't need anything from you and giving we, somebody that money back that doesn't need it right. is even an even bigger message yeah. or, or in death even in death I don't owe you anything even Stephen kind of thing wow. oh gosh that has got to be hard for him to handle yeah. at this point yes Eerie. well now um, let's move on to a different subject okay. which I found very surprising there's a college course yeah it's on Miley Cyrus. What are we going to learn about Miley? Do you remember back in the day they would give courses on Madonna? Yes. Uh, listen, when I first heard this story before reading the article, I was like, oh my God, if my daughter took a course on Miley Cyrus, I'd be really upset. You know what? It would break your achy, breaky right. heart. And, it would, and, and, I, and my bank, you know, which yes. I might not like. But when I read the professor's um, idea behind the course, it, it actually did make sense. She said that when she threw out the topic of Miley Cyrus to her students, they got very engaged and they wanted to talk about Miley Cyrus. And so she wants to look at sociology and culture Mm -hmm. and fame through the lens of Miley Cyrus. So Miley Cyrus is the interesting topic that is engaging kids and she's trying to bring in deeper topics about sex and race and celebrity. So there is a way to handle it from an intellectual perspective. I totally agree and the headline is of course on Miley Cyrus but I remember when I was in Poli Sci you mm -hmm. would take current event courses. Right, right. This is basically just a current event course and what Miley Cyrus ro role she plays in society. Right. And, 
And you certainly want to speak to the students that you're teaching. Right. You want them to right. be engaged and interested. And if Miley Cyrus is what helps kids to be engaged, and that's the way to introduce topics, I say go for Will it. Will they get so. extra credit for twerking? I doubt it. No. Yeah. yeah. Now, if it was just on twerking, then I might have yeah, an issue. Problem. They yeah. do that yeah. on Friday I like. at the yeah. bar. Right. So. Well, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, thank you so much for thank sharing you. your thoughts have with a good us weekend. this morning. You